one of the things we're going to see is the major planning area. Uh, one of the easiest places to hide from the surtax will be in either life insurance products or annuities. And again, it's going to vary from client to client what's going to work best for a particular family. But what do we know? What we know so far is that if we, um, let's say you represent Jill. Jill is age 60, okay? So Jill is age 60, and uh, Jill is over the threshold, okay? So Jill is dangerously over the threshold. She's very concerned about this, and she says There's, there must be something we can do. And you talk to her about a number of opportunities, and finally it comes down to that you're going to put half of her investment income or in annuities and half in life insurance. I'm not saying, and this is an example, okay? I know that this is, we're, we're going to the extreme to, to illustrate a point. But what would happen here, and again, I'm not licensed in either the insurance or the annuity world, but what you would do is if in year one you had 100000 of taxable interest from a CD, obviously a very substantial CD, um, she could put some of that CD into an annuity and the other half could be used to buy a two or three pay life insurance contract. Now, why would you do this? Let's take the annuity first. The strategy on the annuity would be to put wealth into an annuity, take the, enjoy the deferral from your working years till you retire, and then once you retire, start to open up that annuity. And the beauty is you will leapfrog over your high income years. And that's some of why people are calling this a leapfrog annuity. So that's some of why this is being called a, a leapfrog annuity. Um, we are very convinced this is a viable planning technique. I mean, obviously, the annuity structures have been in law a long time. This involves very little tax risk. Um, and, th and that's why we're probably um, fairly big proponents. Now, on the life insurance side, there will be a complete renaissance in the world of life insurance, okay? And what do I objectively mean by that? Um, what we're going to experience is as we become more familiar with the law. Um, you might be representing someone who has a very a passive portfolio, a lot of bonds, and they're coming to you, you know, we like the safety of bonds, but we certainly are not enjoying the taxation. And you might say, well, maybe what we should do is put some of that into a life insurance contract. Um, where, Because one of the beauties of a life insurance contract is you're allowed to pull out your basis first, okay? So under the law, you're allowed to pull out your basis first, and that is a big, big thing. 